Hello lovelies, my name is Shannon and welcome to my channel. Today I'm be doing a spoiler free book review on the Precious Stones trilogy by Kristen Gere. The series was originally written in German and translated into English so there are a couple of changes depending on which version you're reading. The main change that I want to point out is the main character's name. In the original version it's Gwendolyn and in the English version it was changed to Gwyneth or Gwen. I'm not sure why they made the change but because of that I do use both the names. I have watched the first movie, the Ruby Red movie. The main character goes by her original name. If I'm using the, the different names, it's just because I see the character as going by both. And I just want to point out that they're not two different characters. It's the exact same character, just for some reason they changed her name. So this series is about 16 year old Gwen. She lives in London with her family. Gwen's family is fairly normal, except for the fact that they work with this secret society. And Gwen's family also has a time traveler gene that it's passed down to the women's side. There is only one other time traveling family and that family, the gene is passed down through the male line. But this doesn't really bother Gwen too much. She doesn't really have anything going on with that. She's not the one that's believed to have the time traveling gene. So she gets to live a relatively normal life except the fact she just has to keep the secret of her cousin supposedly being a time traveler and also the secret society. But everything changes for Gwen when it turns out that Charlotte isn't the one with time traveling gene, Gwen is. So now she has to deal with this order who doesn't trust her because she hasn't been trained and the fact that she now has to deal with her new abilities there's also strife in the family because obviously some people in her family aren't really happy with the fact that Gwen is the one with the gene. And then there's a time traveler in the other family line, Gideon. Gideon is three years older than Gwen and she falls hard. He is your typical aloof kind of rude guy. And it's because of what's going on between Gideon and Gwen that this series may be a fantasy, but it is mainly a young adult romance. I really, really want to put an emphasis on the fact that it is a young adult romance. And if you're going into this thinking that it's going to be like a really cool fantasy story, it is, but it doesn't spend too much time on the fantasy aspect. And because of the time traveling gene, a good part of the books are taking place in the past. So that is where the historical fiction comes in. The first thing I want to bring up with this series is the pacing. I feel like the story isn't really plot driven. It's more goes by like storytelling. It's more about bringing the readers along with what this character is going through. While it does have a lot of stuff going on in the plot and the series actually takes place within like two weeks. It's a very fast paced plot but I don't feel like the story was written to go along with the fast paced plot. The first book spends a good part just like kind of setting everything up. How Gwen lives her life, her coming into her abilities. It sounds more boring than it actually is but it just I feel like it's paced differently. And I think that has to go with the fact that this was written like a decade ago and it kind of shows with that as well. And nowadays we have things that are just so fast paced because we're all trying to split our attention between different things and, and novels are trying to make sure that it grabs us but this is just written a little bit differently and I felt like that's one of the reasons why it stuck with me because it's like okay she's going through all the stuff here's her friends here's like her normal life and her coming to into her abilities how she's balancing things and just kind of bringing us along like I said more in a storyteller fashion which I actually really did enjoy I really liked it because I felt like if Kristen Gere wrote it to go along with the very fast-paced timeline of the series that it would have given us whiplash because there's so much going on already that if she would have made the novels quicker it just would have been really hard to hold on to all the information that we needed keeping track of characters the plot lines all that sort of stuff so I, I do think that it was written in the best way possible but I do know some people are just like a little iffy about slower paced novels and I just wanted to point that out I also want to point out the fact that it is written in like a two-week time frame the plot points take place under a month I'm a little conflicted about that because there's just uh, so much going on and the fact that Gwen is still going to school full-time and still like having homework and doing normal stuff that it was just like how was this happening in two weeks so there was a, there was that point where I was kind of questioning the timeline and trying to figure out if it was actually possible for all this stuff to happen in like two weeks but I I mean I suppose it is it just it felt very strange so yeah another thing is how the novels end and pick up in the first book we have an ending point and then in the second book it immediately picks up right where the first book left off which doesn't always happen in a lot of the novels that I've read at least so it was really nice to have that it was weird at first but it was also nice because there wasn't that period of oh all this time has passed and now we need to reintroduce you to the characters and reintroduce you to what's what's going on and all this stuff that happened that wasn't mentioned in the books so I do like the fact that especially working within the two-week period and immediately picked up and we're, we're not like left in the dark about anything that was going on I do feel like it was a little strange though it's like why in 
the first book at that point when you're immediately gonna pick up the second book right after that. I felt like she was trying to keep the books within like a certain page count and I'm not sure if there was a specific reason for that or just like a preference. I do really like how the second book ended though. In Sapphire Blue, the novel ended at an emotional high point. I think that that was like the perfect ending. I think that this is my favorite ending throughout the series. In Emerald Green, I feel like the series ending as well as the novel ending was just dissatisfying. I felt like there was so many plot points that weren't really touched on and there was, there was so much stuff that was introduced to the readers that just wasn't wrapped up. Like it was wrapped up but behind the scenes and we weren't really told like how things ended, like how the order was handling things, how the characters are doing, you know, all sorts of stuff that was just kind of left open and I get that some authors like doing that because it's like okay well they're now the reader can fill in what they want to happen but at the same time I kind of was just like so that's it we, we got brought along on the story and then this is the ending we get. So another thing that I didn't really like about the series was the fact of like how the last book ended and like how many things that we just like were left in the dark about. So the next thing that I want to mention are the characters. I love characters they're my favorite part of any novel and I really did enjoy the characters and Ruby Red. I just wasn't sure how I felt about Gwen. She's kind of depicted as this average intelligence, average girl, you know, she's clumsy. I felt for her because the Order was treating her very badly. Like, her cousin Charlotte and Gideon were trained to be time travelers. They were trained to, like, go into different time periods. They know different languages and played a bunch of different instruments. They, they were trained for this and they kind of hold themselves to higher esteem because of that. And then you bring Gwen in and she's kind of like a wrecking ball compared to, like, the rest of them. And the Order treats her very badly. So I feel sympathy for her, but I also felt like Kristen Gear kind of dumbed down her character quite a bit just to make the differences between her cousin Charlotte and Gideon that much more obvious. I also really, really love Leslie, Gwen's best friend, but I also wasn't sure how I felt about the balance between their friendship as well because Leslie is doing all this research for Gwen, looking up all this stuff, taking all this time for her, and I felt like on one side it complements the relationship really, really well, but on the other side, I felt like Leslie was only there for, at least in the first novel, I felt like Leslie was only there just to kind of be the brains of the duo instead of giving Gwen a little bit of more intelligence and balancing the friendship a little bit more. Now in books two and three, Leslie becomes a more prominent character and actually has more of a an emotional support role than I do believe she has in the first book. But at the same time, I, I mean, I love Leslie as a character, but I also feel like she was partly only brought in to be the brains of the friendship. And I am conflicted about just how Gwen was characterized and how her character was set up. Like I'm not gonna have a problem with the fact that, you know, some people are clueless and some people are clumsy, but at the same time, I felt like she was just kind of of throwing all this on Gwen to make the difference between her, Gwen, and the love interest Gideon that much stronger. I feel like Gwen was like, was missing something. You know how some people have like that thing that they just like, they have, Gwen was just missing something, a, a spark in her character that made her unique. And I felt like it wasn't until Gwen got the time traveling gene that she was really unique. I felt like I, it would have been better if she had something else. And I am planning on rereading the series, so it could be that I just missed something, but it's just how I'm feeling about it right now and remembering what I've already listened to because I originally listened to the audiobooks and I'm just not thinking I'm not remembering anything that made Gwen overly special or unique just as like a person. Oh wait, I think I remembered something. I know that her and Leslie watched a lot of movies together and I think that Gwen is able to compare a ton of stuff to like movies. If I'm, I could be remembering that wrong, but I mean, if that is something then, you know, hers and that's great. So the last thing I wanna bring up is the romance. I wanna put a strong emphasis on romance. So if you're going into this thinking this is a cool fantasy story, you are gonna be disappointed because the main focus is the romance. And boy, did it give me flashbacks. It was, uh, it showed how dated it was. Was. And it reminded me of a bunch of the young adult romances I read in like elementary school and beginning of middle school because of some of the cliches. Like I was saying before, Gwen is depicted as this like average girl, watches TV, you know, average grades, clumsy. Gideon, her love interest, is trained in like instruments, languages, etiquette, all sorts of stuff. He can fencing, he's trained in that as well. And they are opposites. I do like the romance together. I think they balance each other out very well. But it was just a couple of parts that just got me cringing. Like he took her breath away every time she, she sees him and her heart beats faster and like the those lines and the fact that oh yeah all this stuff is happening with like the order and different things going on and her family secrets and stuff like that but yeah she's gonna spend the majority of the time worrying over the fact that Gideon may or may not like her so I felt like some respect for Gwen kind of dwindled because her priorities were out of whack but at the same time she's a 16 year old girl this is like the first guy she's like really been interested in I get it but it was also just like such a flashback to other young adult romances that I read and it was just like wow 
wow. Okay, this is where we're going with this. So I just wanted to warn you guys with the romance that if you're not interested in reliving the early 2000s of young adult romance, then you're probably not gonna be interested in this series that much just because it, it will give you flashbacks. <laughs> like that is how outdated this feels just because of her priorities being like ultra on the romance and the fact that Gideon is the stoic rude guy but he's good at everything and Gwen is the average teenage girl. I'm not meaning to put down the book on anything. I just want to be very upfront with you guys and honest with you guys even harshly honest and being just like this is how the book is. If you don't think you're gonna like it then don't even give it the time of day. There's just no point reading it if you know you're not gonna like it because of this. It's because of the romance that this book is kind of conflicting for me because on one side I feel like I shouldn't like the romance as well, much as I do. On the other side though it's this is whatever you like what you like. I do like Gideon and Gwen together. I do think they balance each other out very well just because of the fact that Gideon is so put together and most of his life has been spent training as a time traveler that having Gwen thrown into his world and kind of shake things up being like hey haven't you ever stayed up until like two o'clock in the morning doing all this stuff and eating junk food or whatever and kind of giving him more of those real life experiences I feel like balance out the relationship really well like Gwen helped her with her training and kind of getting her feet under her with time traveling stuff she just kind of gave Gideon his teenagers back I mean he's only 19 years old but I mean he, he kind of comes off like he's older just because of how much responsibility has been put on him. I feel like she's just kind of giving him a little bit more time and kind of letting him be free a little bit more and question things more and just kind of making him open his eyes to experiences and stuff like that. Overall, I do enjoy the romance and I do think that they work really well together. One thing that I don't like about it is the fact that Gideon is very rude to her and they have these periods where he's just like harsh for no reason. It was just trying to like play into like the bad boy role like, oh, he's a bad boy, you shouldn't like him and yet she shows a softer side to him. I felt like that was kind of the way Kristen Gear was trying to go without like making Gideon seem like too much of a bad boy. I'm just not sure if it worked out really well. And that's like one of the few things that I didn't like about the characters together is the fact that Gideon just couldn't get his emotions right and I felt like she was trying to have this bad boy role without giving him the actual bad boy role. But other than that, I did enjoy the romance like I've been saying and I did enjoy the series overall. I am planning on rereading the series actually pretty soon because I originally listened to the audiobook of this during a family trip one weekend and I immediately came home. I bought the series because I wanted the physical copies because I just enjoyed them that much and I just really want to sit down and like read the physical copies and kind of see if I feel any differently about them. Audiobooks are hit or miss with me and because of that I tend not to finish audiobooks. Not because the books are bad just because I tend to tune them out. I just can't really get into audiobooks. The fact that I got into this audiobook series not just with one but like the entire series was really great for me and I just really wanted to see whether or not I'd have like a different experience reading physical copies. I'm hoping to read them hopefully in July or August and kind of seeing how I feel about them after that. So that is all I have to say about this series. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section if you've read the series or interested in them. I'd love to hear from you guys. I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll see you again soon.